Sir, uh, the recording is uh, uh, automatic. I have to see how to change this uh, uh, setting here. Recording should become automatic. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yes, sir. So, my question is with uh, plasmid compatibility. So, you said uh, there can be like only one kind of uh, plasmid inside the host organism. With the uh, same origin of replication. Yeah, right. So, if uh, it has, uh, if two plasmids have same origin of replication and they are in like the same host, there is competition for resources so that uh, only one of them can work effectively. Yeah. So, what yeah. is if uh, two plasmids of different uh, origin of replications were inside the same organism? Will yeah, there be yeah, a problem like, then? Like, like, no, no, no. People actually make a uh, multi subunit protein complex inside bacteria using this. Okay, they have to just choose the expression plasmids a little wisely so that uh, there is a, a compatibility uh, of coexistence. That's it. Okay. More questions? Yes, sir, I have a question. Uh, go uh, sir, uh, restriction enzyme recognition, recognition sequence are always palindromic. So, but sir, why are they palindromic? Why not like other uh, kind of base pairs can act? No, actually, this is not entirely correct. What you said is uh, true. Uh, Okay, the recognition sequence is always palindromic. Yeah, I, I would not know why it is palindromic. Well, what I was going to give you an answer to is that there is a class of restriction enzymes. I think these are uh, class three restriction enzymes where the recognition sequence is one thing, which is still palindromic, but the digestion sequence is quite far away. Thousand base pairs. Okay. But yeah, why they are always palindromic, I really do not know the answer to that. Never looked it up. Sir, um, Ankit. Uh, but sir, I, I, I use his hand before you. Okay, okay, sir. Sure. I will come to you. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I have a question. So, uh, in your lecture, you mentioned that uh, scent plasmids are not required in bacteria, but they are required in yeast. Sen, sen based plasmid. Yes, sir. So, uh, why is it that uh, they are not? I mean, what is the uh, need of uh, sen based plasmid in uh, yeast but not in bacteria? Very good question. If it was Tanu, words, Manu, whatever, then I would say very good question. Next question. But, you know, I will not do it here. So, Sen is the short form of centromere. Okay. So bacteria does not have any centromere, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so in yeast, those plasmids, they have a centromeric sequence, which ensures that during cell division, each of the daughter cells will get one copy of the plasmid because they will behave for all practical purposes just like uh, an yeast chromosome. Okay. However, if you search in the, just Google, what is called a two micron plasmid uh -huh. in yeast, a two micron plasmid in yeast, they do not have the sense sequence. They are much more higher copy number. They will still have the yeast origin of replication, but they will not have the same sequence. So how will it, uh, the yeast cell ensure that a two micron plasmid is also divided equally between the daughter cells? It, 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 is, not, uh, it is not dictated. Two micron plasmid, there is no uh, method to ensure that uh, both the daughter cells will get it. Therefore, there the control is at a different level, just like your, uh, any of your bacterial plasmids. Yes, there is sir. no mechanism to ensure that uh, the, the daughter cells will receive the plasmid. But you don't care. The daughters that did not receive the plasmid, you do not even get to see them. Why? Because 
ampicillin. Yes, the a backbone. Ampicillin, if the daughter did not receive a plasmid, it, it will not grow. So you did not know it existed. <laughs> Similarly, two micron plasmids will always have what is referred to as oxotropic markers. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that is, uh, you know, like what allows uh, an yeast cell to grow, like the, the starting yeast cells uh, for most of the genetic uh, work, they will have several mutations. Uh, they will be Ura minus, Liu minus, uh, His minus. Uh, these have been artificially created uh, for ease of uh, molecular genetic experiments. So a two micron plasmid will have the corresponding gene which is mutated in the original starting is strain, uh, typically Ura4 or Liu2 or His3, something like that. So that uh, in a plate that does not contain uracil, any yeast cell that is growing must have the plasmid. Okay, this is okay. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, so my question is like, uh, we have uh, read about this F plasmids. So according to this principle of uh, plasmid compatibility, uh, we like it means that if a uh, bacterial cell has F plasmid, it will not have a plasmid with uh, ampicillin resistant genes or antibiotic resistant genes. Uh, Hello. I, I did not understand your question. So like we are saying, no two plasmids can actually, you know, uh, coexist in a um, bacterial cell. So if they have the same origin of replication. Okay, so in this case, an F plasmid and an antibiotic resistant plasmid will have different origin of replication. That is why they can coexist. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, and one more thing, like we have two types of replication of this plasmid, stringent replication and relaxed. So in molecular biology for our cloning purpose, which one is more, you know, advantageous, a stringent replication or a relaxed replication? Okay, you have asked a question for which I do not know the answer. I never thought about it. Uh, hmm. I will try to see if I can get some answer. Okay, sir. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Kangsha, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was asking, like, uh, in the beginning uh, of the lecture six, you mentioned about uh, how we can identify mutants which don't grow on galactose. And by using cloning, we can figure out, like, which mutant gene it is. So, uh, the no, thing no, is, not like, by cloning, not by cloning, not by cloning, by library transformation. Yeah, yeah, by library transformation. Sorry. So, uh, Be my question is careful with your language. I am telling you all over and over again because it means something completely different. Okay, be very careful. Ha, bolo. Uh, so the, my question is like, how do we read that library? For example, we prepared a library con consisting of yeast genes uh, yeah. and we are uh, proliferating them in E. coli, uh, mm -hmm. the plasmid. So uh, mm -hmm. after that, for example, I want to find out which is this gene which is defective in galactose. So for that, the plasmids would need to be transferred into the yeast cell, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so like, should we, uh, while preparing the library, should we do it uh, in shuttle vectors itself, or should we just use yeast plasmids to like uh, create this library, and then it will be easier to transform? There is, as far as I understand what you call yeast plasmid is basically a shuttle vector. There is no plasmid that I know of which is used directly in any of the model organisms other than bacteria. Every plasmid is first grown in bacteria, no matter what. Like the basic cloning, subcloning, uh, 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 scaling up the plasmid uh, concentration, all of these are done always in bacteria, no matter what. And then they have to go to another uh, organism. So that's why they are called shuttle vectors. 
uh, it, can, it is specific for one organism or the other. You perhaps will not find a shuttle vector that is uh, that can shuttle between yeast and uh, human cells and not in bacteria. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, Ruchida. Ruchida, go ahead, please. Uh, so in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, as you said, generally we create a genomic DNA library instead of a cDNA library. So I, in general, I wanted to ask, like while library creation, are we already aware of the whole genomic sequence or are we just like, uh, like directly restricting it uh, with any like restriction enzymes of our choice or is this like a very well thought of experiment because uh, we know the complete sequence yeah, yeah. and then we check I, for I, it. I, 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 I got your question. No, uh, Ruchira, it is uh, all the libraries were constructed much, much before uh, any of the genome sequences were known. Okay. So you actually have asked a very important question. I do not know if you fully comprehend what is the importance. <coughs> so, let us do with two things separately, okay? First, let us, uh, first let me inform you that why in East why I specifically mentioned that for yeast genomic DNA library is good enough. Because in yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, other than histi, histone, some of the histone genes and uh, some of the ribosomal uh, proteins, most genes do not have any intron. Okay? You have to say yes, so that I know that you yes, have... Sir. Okay. So now, but in humans, etc., there is a... Uh, there, there are introns. So that makes the coding region very, very long. So when you are trying to complement the uh, mutation, <clears throat> the only way to complement it is the gene which is mutated, the corresponding protein must be produced by the recombinant vector you have put in, right? Yes, sir. So if it is, it is not the complete sequence, then there is no way that the recombinant protein will be produced. Therefore, and, and, and having these very large introns will make sure that that does not happen. Yes. While in yeast, because there is no intron, so genes are just as compact as bacteria. So chances are that within a fragment, the whole gene will be present. Yes, sir. Now the question you asked. So if this is the whole genome, and uh, let us arbitrarily make some genes here, <laughs> this is just one chromosome. I am arbitrarily drawing some genes, etc. Okay. Now, your restriction enzyme, say you are going to digest it, I digest the genome with equal one. Okay. Uh, so, there will be equal one digestion site here, 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 here everywhere, right? Uh, at some frequency, like you know, uh, one in every once in every four thousand bases. So now, what will happen if you look at it carefully? That this gene will be interrupted, right, into two fragments. Yes, sir. It will be interrupted into two fragments. But most of the genes, they will be there with some sequence flanking on the left and right side, right? Yes, sir. Now two things will happen. One is that uh, 
because you were doing it on a very large volume of gen genomic DNA, the restriction digestion is not 100%. Okay? Yes, sir. So by chance, there will be some chromosomes where this particular site was not digested, so you will have this as well. It is by okay. probability because of inefficient, incomplete digestion. But even okay. at this point, you have no clue what are the fragments you have generated. Scientists, yes. are, through painful uh, experimentation, they have optimized the concentration of restriction enzyme, temperature, length of the digestion, to ensure that you get a good representation of the whole genome where most of the genes are intact. Okay. Okay. Like uh, there will be hundreds of papers just on standardizing this. Like I'm talking about uh, 1980s and late 80s. Okay. So now you will have, uh, you know, like uh, these uh, libraries, but you please close your eyes and visualize how it is being done. You will isolate the yeast DNA. It will be a pellet. Then you will make a, a four solution out of it. To this solution, you will add restriction buffer and restriction enzyme. And you will incubate at 37 degrees centigrade for say four hours. Fine? Yes, sir. After that, what you have in the same tube. Now you have, just to show the difference, I'm changing the color. Now what you have is the, like the, it is still the same solution, right? Yes. But now the genome is fragmented because yes. you have acted with the restriction enzyme. Yes. Now to this, you will add cloning plasmid and uh, ligase, right? Yes. Then, so you, you, you see that we are not changing the tube. Yes, we are doing it in the same. Oh. Ah. Yes. So now in the tube, what you have are the ligated plasmids, right? Millions yes. of them, literally millions of them. Yes. Now you will go and transform uh, E. coli with it. Mm, yes. Okay, and you will, uh, you know, like uh, take the the transformation mixture will be grown in presence of ampicillin, right? Because the plasmid has ampicillin resistance. Ah, yes. So it will grow in here, and you will isolate the plasmid through mini prep, like so, uh, mini prep or mini prep, like a reasonably high volume of. Plasmid. So you are now have a new tube where you have a very high concentration of plasmid DNA. Right? So that is your library. You keep it in your freezer. Now, did you get it, Ruchira? Yes, Uchira, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, so... Uh, just, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. 
Okay. Now okay. say you have clone number seven, which is gal minus. Okay, that's a distinct colony you had, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So now you transform this cell with this DNA solution. Okay. okay and then you plate yes, it sir. on these plates, which are okay. no galactose. Yes. So any yeast that has not been transformed with the right plasmid will not be able to grow. Yes. You will yes. see maybe you know couple of colonies in your total number of hundred plates. So these are the colonies yes, yes. that must be harboring the gene that is mutated in number seven mutant. So yes, you then isolate plasmid from the yeast and then uh, sequence it. Yes, sir. Did I answer your question, Ruchira? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sir. Ah. So it may also be possible like the gene that we think is uh, helping in galactose metabolism is actually mm -hmm. some other uh, gene uh, which can actually uh, supplement like uh, it's a alternate, uh, it's a parallel pathway. So in that case, uh, when we are ascertaining that yes, this is the gene which is responsible for galactose metabolism, isn't there a chance of error there? There is a chance of error. So uh, nowadays, what you will do is that uh, once you know the sequence uh, uh, from the plasmid, then you will quickly sequence that part of the genome and make sure that uh, the, it is mutated there. Okay. And uh, so when they were doing this in the early experiments, so uh, mm -hmm. it is also possible, right, that they did not find all the genes at once because uh, they, this uh, library preparation was uh, like a random process. It was not very directed yeah. with the cutting yeah. and all. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there must have been a possibility that they missed out a lot of genes. Of course. Of course. That's the reason why we know only uh, even something as easy to work with as yeast we only know uh, a fraction of the total is genome's uh, function. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now, uh, I have, uh, so, you know, like uh, what I did not get into. Uh, okay, Ankit, uh, uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. I yes, have sir. to cover my Yeah. A follow-up question from this thing only. So, sir, now when we are uh, preparing the library, uh, mm -hmm. it can also happen that two genes get into the same uh, plasmid. Like we have the galactose uh, metabolizing gene and one more gene, extra gene, which gets into the same plasmid. So now, when we are transforming, when we are transforming the mutant gal negative with the library, you know, from the library, a uh, um, like a plasmid has come, which has the galactose metabolizing gene also, and one more extra gene. Now mm -hmm. it is giving the colony. It is giving the positive colony. Now mm -hmm. that colony has, uh, it, it has two genes. Now, when we are mm -hmm. isolating the plasmid and sequencing, if we don't know the function of the other gene, it may happen that we consider that, uh, stretch of two genes as, the, as a single gene. No, because the un non viable principle is that RF cannot be disrupted. So you will find okay. two RFs, like ATG to stop and then again another ATG to stop. Yes, so you yes, will now yes. have to separately clone the two fragments and uh, uh, look into it. It, it, it uh, did happen with a friend that I know. Hmm. So it is uh, so very it easy to dissect. If two, two start codons are there, then we can actually see, okay, these are the two genes. Not okay. two start codons. There is a stop codon in frame between the two start codons. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Clear. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I will talk about a very, very important concept. Very sir, very I have one question. Last okay. Question. Okay. Sir, uh, how to overcome the host restriction uh, digestions, the restriction enzyme digestion of our gene of interest? Because when you uh, transmit or transfer some gene of interest uh, of our desired gene of interest, 
then we do not know that which uh, restriction enzymes are available in that host then how to overcome that uh, host restriction digestion i did not understand your question sir uh, 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 we are talking about uh, yeast right the library is being made from yeast sir uh, sir sir when you uh, like if you want a uh, production of uh, insulin uh -huh. uh -huh. then uh, then uh, we transfer the like uh, expression vectors with the uh, with the insulate gene when mm -hmm. you transfer to the like bacteria or yeast then we do not mm -hmm. know which restriction enzymes are available in that host then if it will oh, degrade no 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 see first of all yeast does not have restriction enzymes so that is a list of your worries bacteria yes, uh, if you go to uh, like um, uh, well, new england biolab website yes, and uh, take a look at the genetic makeup of your uh, expression host yes sir okay you will find those are hsdm negative that is host restriction modification system negative they are mutated they are they are artificially created strains where they do not have the host restriction modification system therefore yes. uh, restriction enzyme of your recombinant uh, plasmid uh, does not happen okay sir. thank you sir thank you sir it done okay <clears throat> now for yeast the advantage is that you have the entire gene this is the start codon this is the stop codon and this is 5 prime 3 prime utrs and possibly the promoter enhancer also somewhere over here so when you are randomly restriction digesting you will get little bit extra goes into a plasmid ensures that it is transcribed from uh, sorry transcribed from here and translated okay plus your uh, you know uh, uh, plasmid can have its own promoter enhancer very strong promoter enhancer that also does not hurt because if it is there uh, all you will have is uh, you know a little bit of extra length uh, now but you know uh, when you are thinking of cdna library because see like you cannot do this kind of experiments with mammalian cells insect cells drosophila nothing because all of these genomes they have introns so there what you do is you construct a cdna library so did you all uh, have moved up to that part where cdna library uh, construction is shown or should i cover it in the next discussion class yes. Sir, I have covered, but I have to look into uh, the cDNA formation. Uh, that is the mRNA to uh, okay. DNA formation a bit in details. So, 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 uh, I my request is that when you will be uh, studying it, all of you, please pay attention to the detail. If necessary, look up certain websites to. Uh, understand exactly how cdna libraries are produced and then pay attention to what i am alerting you now to see rna is single stranded right and a single stranded molecule uh, nucleic acid will have very high propensity to form intramolecular hydrogen bonding therefore rna is known to have secondary structures 
and these secondary structures sometimes can be quite stable now the fundamental imagine that the atg in here is here in the rna aug imagine that the aug is here polyatel is here the reverse transcriptase is going like this okay sorry the reverse transcriptase is going like this there always is a possibility that it will not be able to melt the structure and reach to the aug okay and if it does not reach aug then uh you know like a uh, uh, the protein will not be formed period okay that is one problem the second problem is that i have highlighted in slide number 46 pay special attention to slide number 46 once you have done that then only you will understand the concept of genome coverage okay hello okay yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes yeah. okay uh, so in the next class let us uh, look at that and next generation sequencing i should tell you that i am not really an expert on next generation sequencing because it Uh, happened before my generation okay but i do know the basics i will uh, you know uh, 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 like uh, i will help you with those concepts uh, but uh, yeah so uh, and uh, so in this set of lectures what are the things that are there uh, just a minute let me quickly okay we are supposed to go to week 2 Have I not loaded lecture eight? Yeah, I have loaded lecture eight. Eight so, and nine. Till nine, you have loaded. Till nine okay. is there. So lecture seven, me kya hai? Sir, seven me he. C D N A. C D N A library and how to you know uh, find out the identify the gene which is responsible for galactose metabolism using this whole C D N A library concept. Okay. Okay. Computation and. yeah so therefore uh, we should be able to cover that on wednesday right yes sir yes and uh, then uh, you know like uh, friday yes, i do not really know the state i will be in uh, because if you like i am supposed to start from my home at 2 am on 25th morning like the intervening night of 24th and 25th big for a flight at 6 am then right after reaching jabalpur i will have to uh go to the exam center and do all sorts of circus there therefore chances are that i will have zero sleep on the night of 24th now i am no longer as young as you are so if i cannot sleep one whole night i might be whacked out of shape so keep an eye out if i can manage i will take a discussion class on friday as well okay and monday i do not really know the coming back schedule i will get to know about it uh, today afternoon then i will inform you okay okay sir
You know, like uh, Navneet. Navneet, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, tell me honestly, are you comfortable? Are you learning the subject? Yes, sir. You should be perfectly honest. Yes, Because sir. Because if you say yes and you are actually not learning, then uh, uh, there will be trouble. Yes, sir. It's fine so far. Okay. Yeah. How about Paul? Paul, you keep on dropping in and out. I do not know what exactly. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm audible, sir. Hello. Yeah. Ah, you are audible. Yes, sir. Sir, I had covered until the ESG genetics lecture four, and I had uh, go through all the discussion uh, sessions since my last two network was a problem. Hello. No, but are you comfortable? Are you, are you understanding the subject? Yes, sir. Okay, this is for the whole class. Um, Please make sure that you are absolutely comfortable with the lectures and the discussion sessions, etc. To make sure that you are actually learning the subject, because uh, my, you know, like exam is uh, one very small thing, but it is complete waste of your time if uh, you could not manage to learn the subject. Then it does not serve the purpose. Okay. Therefore, please make sure that uh, whatever question you have, you should ask me, and you should ensure that you are learning. Okay. Chalo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Okay.